Hello and welcome to the Cytokine Signaling Forum Author Interview Podcast. My name is Professor Peter Nash from the University of Queensland and today I'm talking to Professor Fabiola Atsini from the Department of Clinical and Experimental Medicine at the University of Messina. Welcome and thanks for giving up your time, Fabiola. Um, your, uh, we're talking about your review paper, the adverse events, the clinical considerations and the management recommendations in rheumatoid arthritis patients treated with JAK inhibitors. And I must say there's a huge amount of work gone into putting this paper together. So can you give us a bit of an idea what stimulated you to write this paper uh, and tell us a little bit about the background of this paper, please. Um, I'm, I'm the other author, started to write uh, this, um, this review related to the invitation of uh, the editor of, this, uh, of the journal. In reality, the first invitation was uh, the same, but in patients treated with the anti-TNF agents. And I'm rewriting to the editor, I said, uh, maybe because I'm involved in a, in a different uh, uh, work related to drug inhibitors, uh, one of the most important or topic at the moment is not uh, anymore anti-TNF agents, but drug inhibitor. And the editor approved my idea. Uh, we start in particular with three co-authors that write uh, with, um, revise with me all the literature, uh, Dr. Salotta and Dr. Nucera, and then the other one support us in uh, research uh, the paper, reading all together, and revise uh, the paper. This was okay, uh, the idea. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is your background rheumatology or clinical pharmacology? What's your background? I'm a rheumatology immunologist. Okay, excellent. Now, the JAK inhibitor has only recently been approved for use in Europe. We've had them in Australia for a couple of years. The Americans had TOFA for five years. Can you uh, tell us about your personal experience with the JAK yet, or is it a little bit too early? Um, I just started to use uh, uh, both JAK inhibitors. Uh, TOFA cheating, I have uh, 60 patients treated in clinical practice with this uh, patient, but it's too early to have uh, some results. Until now, okay. it worked well, but it's only a few months. Right? Some patients have only one month of treatment. Does no, I, I don't have any result uh, to, um, to demonstrate some difference or some good result related to clinical practice, because in clinical practice at the moment, um, high treat, uh, in particular patients that fell to uh, anti-TNF agents or fell or demand. Very uh, particular type of the patient that uh, treating patients in reality. Okay. So tell us a little bit about uh, this paper, why it's important, um, what your aims were. Tell us a little bit about how you went about it and, uh, and the importance of this paper, you think, to the clinic, practical clinical rheumatologist. Um, I believe that uh, one um, the most important endpoint of uh, our paper was uh, uh, to summarize all the results uh, by clinical trial, and, um, this, and in particular to underline that for the first time in uh, some of the clinical trial, in particular, for example, in oral scan uh, related to uh, tofacitinib or maybe in um, in in case of uh, beracitinib, we we'll also evaluate not only the efficacy, evaluated by it, uh, the uh, composite scores, such as the 28 or SR20, 50, and 70, but also to evaluate uh, the patient report outcome. It's the first time that uh, um, the trial focuses in uh, this portion of the topic, that this is uh, fatigue, pain, and uh, also morning sleep. That is uh, uh, something that for the first time uh, just report uh, some information related to the feeling of the patient. And maybe uh, this that is, uh, could be influence the compliance of uh, our patients in clinical practice. 
Okay, so the PROs are new and very important. Um, one of the commonest questions we get is which of the two should I use? Having done this extensive RCT, both efficacy and safety, is there any uh, evidence-based way to pick one over another? Um, related to the safety, related to the safety, there are some difference um, in um, between these drugs. For example, in the case of um, tofacitinib, there are um, some difference related to the um, gastrointestinal perforation. That uh, there are rare cases, but it's reported. And for example, in case of the patient with the diverticulitis, I believe that the clinician needs to take mind this information. And in case, for example, of baricitinib, it's important to remember that there are box warnings and relate to the possibility to have the problem related to the coagulation. And also this is something important. And one of the most important topic, of course, is related to the infection, in particular the infection related to herpes virus. Okay, because I read your paper, I didn't see you stress anything about uh, thromboembolism in particular, unless I missed it. In particular, uh, looking across all the clinical trials, to come up with the conclusion as to whether there was a real difference between drug and placebo. Were you able to really analyze the whole of the baricitinib clinical trial data and see whether the difference that they saw in thromboembolism was the quirk of one study or consistent across all studies? Uh, there are uh, only few data related to this one. It's not in this uh, clinical trial that we have evaluated, but um, this uh, was reported by another study that um, I just analyzed uh, two weeks ago, but I don't have it with me at the moment, but it's not uh, very stressed in the clinical trial that we have evaluated. Well, I think it's pretty important because the quirk of one yeah, study if may... If I have a moment, maybe I have the, um, the presentation that uh, I present uh, to one uh, chart two weeks ago. And, okay. Uh, okay, I will check for this information. Okay, and when you look across the TOFA clinical trial database, did they have a thromboembolism issue? They are, but it's not mm, so analyzed so well. Well, okay. I think the, what, what, what saved TOFA, if you like, is that they had a few thromboembolic okay. events in the placebo arm. This, so, in... this thromboembolic event was evaluated in particular for uh, all uh, the uh, jack inhibitors. But they are only baricitinib. And after the approval of the FDA, they are writing thrombosin, including deep venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, arterial thrombosis, and some fatal have occurring in patients treated with the olimiant. Patients with asymptomatic of thrombosis should be evaluated properly. Related yeah, to but what is, this, what is this reference for this paper? What paper is this? In, um, it's possible to find this result in Kramer et al. Analysis of neutroph neutroph uh, analysis of uh, neutrophil played in full phase two and phase three study of baricitinib. That is, yeah, that uh, was presented. Uh, that was presented at ULA, and uh, it was analysis of lymphocytes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm I'm talking. I didn't find in your analysis of all the different trials that there was an imbalance in the venous thromboembolism when you included all the studies, not just one trial where there was a five to nil difference. Yes, it's true. I'm, I'm sorry for this uh, missing data. That is very okay. important. And the, other issue, and the other issue that came from the US, is there efficacy for the two milligram dose compared to the four milligram dose? 
and are you convinced from what you've studied of the safety difference between the two and the four milligram dose? Because the FDA made a big deal of the dose. Okay. Uh, you didn't see you didn't see when you analysed the baricitinib that the two milligram was either less effective or more safe. Yeah, there are some differences related to two and four milligram. When I read all the trial, there was yeah. quite uh, that there are some some difference in patient case, but in all the trial. Um, it was not stressed enough that this is, um, there are so large a difference. Was it right? Okay, there are a difference, but finally they work well, both work well. And the difference in general says that there's no, significant, uh, no statistical significance. Okay, not, uh, and for the practicing clinician, then what dose would you recommend we use? Should we use two milligrams or four milligrams? What are you going to use okay. in your patient? Uh, I treated only one patient with baricitinib, unfortunately, because it's not yet approved in the south of Italy. These drugs okay. are not reversible yet. This and what are you going to use? What dose will you use? Four milligram in this case, because it was very aggressive uh, in rheumatoid arthritis in patients with uh, antibody positive, and that file all the type of anti TNF. Uh, agents available, all the type or other biological agents available in, um, on the marketing, including rituximab. Okay. Um, and I note that sort of April 18 was when you did your cutoff. Did you decide not to put any um, upadacitinib or filgotinib data into this analysis? Uh, I, I tried to, uh, to put the, name, the information, but uh, also I reply all observation that the referee um, sent to me, but nobody stressed uh, about this topic, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> right. And, yeah, I um, received a, um, a pretty good um, uh, reply by the referee. And uh, there was uh, a part uh, in which I stressed some think difference, uh, and then this was uh, was asked to me to be delayed uh, by the referee. Right. Okay. Um, and the other thing that you stressed was the differences with the uh, um, viral infections and things. Is there any take-home messages that you'd like to recommend with the viral um, infections? Because now there is some Taiwanese and Japanese data of hepatitis B, at least, with tofacitinib. Any, any messages you'd like to give the clinician about viral infection? Um, I believe one of the most important uh, information that uh, I would like to, um, to give to all uh, the colleagues will be um, the uh, possibility to have a, a potential reactivation of the Latin epizoster uh, viral infection that are one of the most important infections, it may be treated after evaluating the patient antibody profile, for example, or to use the possibility to vaccinate the patient, as it was done in the US, for example. Okay. Um, in the other very common question, particularly amongst the Asian population where they've got higher rates than Europeans and Australians, how would you recommend the clinician manages Zoster? Should we vaccinate everybody? Should we not vaccinate everybody? Do we do serology? Do we not do serology? What do you recommend? What do you do in, what do you do in Italy? In Italy, what I do, because they are a group of um, the research group uh, focuses on infection in patient treated immune so specific drug, the idea uh, shared uh, with the infectivologist uh, colleague is to evaluate the uh, serology in this patient and to impatient that uh, according to the infectivologist suggestion is necessary to vaccinate, this patient will be vaccinated. But uh, the only limit in Italy now is the, the type of the vaccine because the vaccine that is uh, now available in Italy is not uh, cover uh, it's not offer a very good um, protection. Protection, and for okay. that, 
but uh, everybody in Italy waiting for the new one that uh, coming uh, very soon. It's not uh, yet available in Italy. I don't know in UK. Uh, no, it's not either. How, how do, in Australia anyway, how do you actually manage it? Because they have to be off all their drugs for a couple of weeks. What do you do? In this case, what uh, we do, in general, the suggestion of the, um, the colleague, uh, the infectivology colleague, is uh, stop it, just uh, one, um, um, in case, for example, of Jack inhibitors, I don't have any, any evidence. I have only the evidence in anti TMF. In general, the suggestion is, uh, for example, the patient use, uh, uh, finish to have uh, the last ingestion of, uh, for example, adalimumab, and after uh, um, five times of the life of the drug, will be vaccinated, and then according to the suggestion of the infectiologist, will be uh, used again the anti-TNF or not. But it's also under the study, all under the study at the moment. Well, right, well that's, that's a long time off drug for people with active disease. Um, and yeah, should we be doing things with uh, other viruses? Should I be giving all my young women Gardasil to prevent them HPV infection, herpes simplex? Is there any, should we be doing anything about other viruses or they don't seem to be an issue? For the other virus in general, in Italy, in part, all the patients that uh, arrive in a rheumatology clinic in Italy will be screening for hepatitis B and C. And if the patient has a, a latent form of hepatitis B, will be treated with an antiviral drug according to the, the guideline or the suggestion of infectivologist. In case of hepatitis C, if uh, um, depending on the, the viral load level, it will be decided which type of the drug will be used or not. Okay. Um, there are a number of other kind of Jack-related side effects that I was wondering if you wanted to comment on, um, and particularly the mechanism and if we should do any monitoring. For example, the rise in CPK, and, for example, the rise in creatinine. Is there any guidance you can give the clinician from the study about worrying about it, not worrying about it, monitoring it or not? I, I believe that's one of the important uh, um, uh, change, in lab, the laboratory changes that will be um, monitored will be neutrophil because there are a degree in neutrophils. And uh, creatinine depends. If the they are a patient with a, the problem, the renal problem, okay, this is, uh, will be very important. In the other case, I think uh, the um, follow-up will be important uh, in all the patients. Okay, and what are you going to recommend about lipids? What we should be doing with uh, monitoring lipids and treating with statins, etc.? I'm sorry? Uh, treating your elevated in cholesterol and triglyceride. How, okay. how would you is recommend a, uh, we monitor it and treat it? Okay, this depends on the uh, national uh, guideline. I follow in general the EULAR recommendation. And according to okay. the EULAR recommendation of the patient that come in a, the hospital will be evaluated for um, cholesterol profile in general for all uh, uh, profile and uh, if this, this patient has uh, some uh, risk of uh, some cardiovascular risk, we will evaluate by uh, echocardiogram and the electrocardiogram. And then, according to the national guideline and European guideline, this patient will be treated or not. Okay. Now, um, it'll take a while before patients get into registries in big numbers. Um, we've now got, I think, nine and a half years of safety with tofacitinib and a few years of baricitinib. How long do you think we need before we can be confident of the long-term safety of the JAK inhibitors? Oh, this is a, a very tricky question. But um, um, because in Italy, um, the information related to the patient that is treated with the JAK inhibitor uh, just started to be put in um, this uh, Italian register that the name is uh, Gisea. I believe that in uh, one, two years, maybe it is possible to have uh, 
the first uh, information related uh, to the, the Jack inhibitor in uh, Italian population. In order to be confident, I believe that um, it's time, and um, even if uh, the period in which this drug appeared uh, on the market and in clinical practice are really different at the time when it was approved all the other biological agents, a lot of information comes from the other drug. I believe that the clinician have a, a lot of, have a, a good background in order to uh, understand what uh, happening with the, this drug. Because the mechanism of the action is uh, just a, a, a mechanism that uh, cover um, the fat on anti-TNF or ELS6 different cytokines that all the clinicians has, uh, um, have experience in clinical practice. Okay, thank you. Um, so wrapping up then, what do you think is the takeaway message from this particular study? What findings do you think should influence clinical practice? I believe that um, the, the, that the most important data that come from the, this, uh, this study is um, that I tried to summarize with the other author all uh, the, the data with the limitation, of course, related to the, the trial. And uh, in the commentary, um, as per commentary, I just um, try to give uh, some um, recommendation, uh, useful in clinical practice, for example, in case of uh, alpha infection uh, on uh, lip profile change. And um, I believe that um, would be uh, important uh, to know this information for the clinician in order to treat the patient according to the, uh, the, their profile. Because one of the, um, the end point now in, uh, in rheumatology is to, is to treat all the patient, um, every patient according to the profile. This means the comorbidity, the disease activity, um, with the, different types of drug, and in particular with the correct, the more properly drug. Okay, we'll put your um, uh, cap on and tell us, look into your crystal ball. In five years' time, what's your prediction for the drug of first choice for rheumatoid arthritis? Do you think it'll be oral small molecules like the JAKS? Or do you think it'll still be injectable biologics? What's your guess for five years' time? This is uh, um, difficult to reply at the moment, but because uh, every patient, of course, um, prefer to use a tablet instead of to use injection, and in particular, this is true for uh, the younger patient um, that have uh, a social life and a uh, um, work life, I believe that uh, the choice will be, the, the case of choice will be tablet, but I don't know, depend the safety result and the efficacy result in clinical practice. Okay, because do you, what do you make of RA beam where the gold standard of uh, Humira and methotrexate was beaten and uh, the select compare with upadacitinib is the same and oral strategy they are just as effective? Do, do you think that will be important to rheumatologists? I believe that is uh, very important for two points. First, for the patient and second, because now the rheumatology clinic is very busy in particular, um, this patient needed to come uh, to the hospital um, for uh, uh, frequent um, examinations and uh, need a, um, demonstration. For example, uh, all the patients that start uh, the treatment with the injection, the subcutaneous in injection, for example, need uh, that they, because in Italy there are uh, no uh, nurses. Uh, Enough, but uh, in general, it's the same doctor that explain um, the modality uh, that all the dry, uh, all the um, syringe will use, all the system it will use, need a lot of time to explain all 
the patient is. And uh, another important point is that uh, this patient that is uh, also registered in the uh, register needs to be evaluated for all composite parameters, all safety data will be um, um, evaluated all the time. Okay. Um, any other last comments you want to make, like uh, uh, how the, the JAK seemed to be superior to the TNFs when they looked at the pain measures? Is there any other comments from your uh, study before we finish? The absent data that um, is possible to read that in some cases is superior to adalimumab, um, paricitinib in particular, and also sofacitinib. But I believe that it's too early because this is a clinical trial. I am waiting for uh, the result for the clinical practice. I, I don't have experience enough uh, to, uh, to study something different. Okay, well, thank you again for your time. And congratulations on uh, your paper and just how much amount of work went into putting that together. Um, and for those listening, if you'd like to know more about this paper and others uploaded to the CSF website this month, detailed slide sets are available in the publication section at cytokinesignaling.com. C-Y-T-O-K-I-N-E-S-I-G-N-A-L-L-I-N-G dot com. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or other podcast media and let us know what you think. We'd love to have some feedback on what you want to hear, what topics, what papers you want to hear, and we'll try and uh, fit all those in. So thank you very much for your time, Professor Atzini, and congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you very much for your time and for uh, giving me this opportunity.